Hey guys, I'm gonna show you how I've used make.com to build many automations that help me in my many businesses, help me do tasks, make things easier, and help me automate everything that I do or need to do. Now, we all know AI is literally helping many business owners build businesses, scale their businesses, and grow in whatever industry that they're in. So I'm gonna show you how I use make.com. Now, what is make.com? Make.com is an automation platform. And really what it does is it helps you build anything. You're able to build workflows, you're able to build apps, you're able to build systems. Literally, you're able to automate anything. And for those that might be asking, what does this mean? Think about having employees. This is what people are calling AI agents, systems that can do stuff for you utilizing AI. And if you want to sign up for make.com, I've put down my referral link that you can use to sign up. And once you open make.com, the first thing you need to understand is you're going to come into an organization like this. You've got team, you've got scenario, templates, connections, web hooks, and more. Now, let's start off with templates because that's an easy way to understand it. The first thing you need to understand is that make.com offers you templates. Now, the first template you're able to generate using Using chat GPT completions into a Google Sheet, you're able to add a webhook into Google Sheet, you're able to sync Facebook leads, you're able to, there's so many automations that Make already gives you that you can use in your business. And a lot of people have asked me and say, what do people use automations for? Basically, whatever that you do as a human being, you're able to do it on Make.com. Now, once you've signed up, you go to Scenario. Scenario is the best place for you to build what you want to build and create a new scenario. And once you get to create a new scenario, the first thing that will pop up, it will be all the applications that are on make.com. There's Google Sheets, there's Facebook Messenger, there's Airtable, there's WhatsApp, there's webhooks. What is a webhook? Webhook basically holds or catches information for you on the internet, Gmail, Google Drive, Instagram. There's literally any application that you want and you are able to use it to automate whatever system that you would like to automate. There's even apps. Apple iOS. That's quite interesting. Uh, there's Google Slides, there's Salesforce. Literally, these are all the applications that are available. Now, for the purpose of what we're doing, I'm going to use Google Sheets just to teach you a lesson so that uh, if anybody wants to follow through, you're able to do so. Now, when you click on Google Sheets, you'll see there's a lot of different options that come up. There's Watch New Row, there's um, Cells, Watch Changes, there's Sheets, Perform a Function. There's so many different things listed. Now, in order not to confuse you, what you see here, when you see Acid or when you see Instant or Acid, these are triggers. This is basically what is going to happen to cause your automation to run? What is the thing that you're going to do to make your automation run? That's a trigger. Now, whenever you start any automation, you always start with a trigger. What is the thing that you're going to do in order to make sure that your automation runs? So this trigger here, it triggers when a new row is added. Now, the beginning of any automation should be a trigger. Why? Because you need something to start. So here we've got watch new rows. So whenever we add a new row into our spreadsheet, it's going to trigger. Now, if I click here, it's going to come through. And the first thing you're going to see as it comes through, it's going to ask you to actually put in your login details into whatever Google account that you're using. I've already got one here. And it's saying to you, select by path. You're going to select how you're going to connect it. Select the drive that you're going to connect it to. Select the spreadsheet you're going to connect it to. And you can basically choose how you want to connect this specific spreadsheet that you want to do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my... Uh, own connection that I've created. But let's say I had not created a connection. What would I do? Click on add and you would come and you would click on your connection. Now I'd name my collection and say maybe my, my Google account, my Google account. And I would click on sign in with Google and it would pop up a new screen that enables you to sign into your account. And essentially you're giving it permission to link to your Google Sheets. Now, once you've been able to do this, it's going to say verifying connection. And once that's done, the connection is set up. Now, you want to choose what spreadsheet you're going to use. And I'm going to open up a spreadsheet on a different page. I'm going to open up a Google spreadsheet, a new Google spreadsheet for the purpose of this exercise. And I'm going to say a blank spreadsheet. And once I've opened up a blank spreadsheet, I'm going to call it make tutorial. So if you're following at home, you can call it whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to just put numbers here. Number one number two and number three.
just so I populate some data there. Now, if we go back to make.com, you'll notice on this side that when you say select by path, it's basically saying, do you want to choose a path in which your spreadsheet exists in your Google workspace or your Google account, or do you want to enter it manually? Now, if I say enter manually, it's going to ask me for the spreadsheet ID. What's a spreadsheet ID? Here, between the letters 1 right up to E, this is my spreadsheet ID. So I can either choose this spreadsheet ID, copy, 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 and I can copy this, and I can come back to my make.com, and I can put in my spreadsheet ID. This is me entering it manually. And immediately upon doing that, I can come and put in my, my, my sheet name. Uh, what is the sheet name? Uh, my sheet name is uh, sheet one. That's the sheet name. So it's sheet one. I just come here and copy it and go back to make.com and paste the sheet here. Now, if I paste the sheet here, that's sheet one. And if I do that and click OK, it's essentially going to say, now from where should it start running from? And I can choose maybe run all, or I can say choose manually, or I can say a specific ID. So I'm able to choose. Now, what does it mean? It means from where should it start taking information from? Because imagine if you're putting in a spreadsheet that has 10,000 details. It's going to run all of them. And remember, every run that you do with make.com, that's a cost. That's an automation being used. So if I come and say all, it's essentially going to run all the uh, details that are on my spreadsheet. Now, always click save. That's important. Always save your automations. Now, if I click on the sign and I say run this module only, it's going to run. And if you look here, so running the automation means that go and collect this information from my Google spreadsheet. Now, if you look here, it's come back to say, right, the first one, A, it's got the number two, row number two, and this is the detail that it's got. And it's also got number three as well, and it's brought in the detail. So this is the detail that it brought in. Now, if I come back to my spreadsheet and I change this number and I write hello and I write bye and I write hi, and I'm just making this short so that um, you are focusing on learning. And I come back to my automation and I say run this module only. It's going to run and you're going to be able to see those details coming forth here. Now, as you can see, there are no details here. So what that means is that I, I'd need to then, okay, let me say run this module only. All right, so choose where to start perhaps. And I can say all, run all, and I can say OK, and then I can say run this module. Now, the reason why it wasn't running before is because it only runs from where you set it moving forward. So imagine if your automation always ran and it always ran from the beginning of your spreadsheet. You've got 10,000 details. It's going to run every single detail. That costs you automations. So you always need to choose from where. So I said from all because I've just put in three details. Now look, those words by is now here. The high is also now here. Our spreadsheet has now run. Now, you might be asking yourself and say, right, I've got a spreadsheet. What am I able to put here? Now, this could be an accounting spreadsheet. It could be your business numbers. It could be so many different things that you are able to put in here. Now, what is this? This is a schedule setting. You are able to choose when it should run. Remember, the reason we do automations is because we don't want to do this stuff manually. We want the stuff to happen automatically. And as a result of that, this is how you choose when it should run. So I can choose once every day, or I can choose every day, sorry, or I can choose the days of the week, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm able to choose when my automation should run. Or I can choose the days of the month. Or I can say on demand, meaning whenever I need to use it. But you are able to control when your automation should run. And that's quite lovely. Now, if you want to change this. Now, this is a, this is a trigger that you get to choose when it should run. Let's say, for example, you wanted to make it an instant trigger. What's an instant trigger? An instant trigger means that the automation will run every time that you need it to run. So remember what I said to you. If we come back here to the spreadsheet and if I come here and I say acid watch new rows, it triggers when a new row is added. So this is only when a new row is added. So for example, if I come here and I say, um, let me say um, on demand, just so I, it's going to run whenever I've added a new row 
or I can come here and say, um, run this module, I can run the module myself, or I can come here and choose whenever I need it to run, right? So I'm just gonna say at regular intervals for now. I, I don't want to confuse you guys with too many things, right? So if I come here and I say run once, it's waiting for an automation to happen, then it's gonna run, right? So right now it's run, I haven't put in any new information. So that's the reason why it ran, right? But if I come now and I come here and I've put hello, bye and hi, then I put, um, let's put happy in row number four, right? And I come back to my automation, then I click on run once. It's now going to put happy, why? Because I've put it that whenever you get a new row, whenever a new row is added, you can run, right? So if I had put it to say run at regular intervals every 15 minutes, so every 15 minutes when it runs, if I've put four new rows, it's going to put output four new rows. If I put one new row, it's going to output one new row. So that's how this trigger works. Now, you might be asking yourself and say, but if I don't want it to run every four minutes or every five minutes, and I want it to run whenever I put a new row, Whenever I put a new row, it must run. That is called an instant trigger. Now, if you come here, you see it says instant, right? So if I choose an instant trigger, now for an instant trigger, you can only put it when it triggers when a cell is updated or watches only changes made in Google Sheet app, Sheets add-on required. Now, what this means is that you need to connect your sheet directly with make.com so that whatever changes you do on your sheet, it's able to change it automatically on make.com. Now, when we started off with automations, you had to run everything manually. Now you can integrate your sheet to run automatically with make.com without you having to run it every uh, a few minutes or, or whatever trigger that you'd put here, right? So that's the new way to do it. Now, before a lot of companies used to make a lot of money like monday.com, Airtable, because they used to build instant triggers and Google didn't have an instant trigger, meaning it couldn't connect directly with an automation platform. So we had to run everything manually every single time. Now you're able to set up an instant trigger and that's where uh, I want to show you what to do. So let's delete this. We can delete this module and we can come here and we can go to instant. Now it's going to wait and watch whenever changes happen. Now, this is a trigger. If I move the trigger onto the new one, you see it's got a different sign. Instead of a clock, it's got a zap. And what that zap is, it shows that it, it's instant. It triggers whenever it's instant. Now we need to connect it. Remember, we connected the old one. The acid one, now we need to connect the instant one. How do we connect it? Now, when you are connecting an instant trigger, you create what we call a webhook. What's a webhook? It essentially hooks information on the internet so that it processes the internet information coming from another platform directly onto your automation. Now, let's create a webhook. When you click on create a webhook, let's call this one Google Sheet Tutorial, right? Now, if I click on save here, you'll see that the Google Sheet tutorial is now saved, but it's given me a number here or a, a hook rather. And sometimes it's difficult to explain this because I'm trying to explain it in a way that everybody can understand, but sometimes it's difficult because of the words that, that are specifically used. It's given me a URL here, right? So if I say copy address to clipboard, I copy this address. What I can do is I can come to my spreadsheet and on my spreadsheet, I am able to come to extensions and if you're on google and you're on google sheets under extensions you'll see make for google sheets then i come through to settings and once i'm on settings it's going to open up settings on this side and i'm able to paste that hook i'm essentially saying whatever happens on the spreadsheet please make sure that you send it over or you send it back to make.com and i'm able to click on save now, once I click on save, it's going to save this and it's going to run. So whenever I change something on my Google Sheets, it's automatically going to run on um, make.com. Now, the first thing I need to do on make.com is I need to switch this on. Why am I switching this on? Remember, it's off because we're testing it. We're running it manually. Now it's instant. And if I switch this on, it means my automation is now on, right? And it's saved. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to just go back. Once, so that I can view the automation from a diagram perspective, that's how I'm going to be able to see whether it's running or not, right? And I'm going to come and I'm going to make a change to a sheet and I'm going to say 
hello to. Once I've made the change to the sheet, what's going to happen is it ran. You saw that. Why? Because I put a webhook on my Google Sheet that allows it to hook instantaneously. And this is the beginning of any automation. Any automation, it must get information from somewhere. Either it's a webhook that you set up or it's a trigger that you set up and that trigger works in terms of intervals or time-based, right? And that's an asset trigger. And an instant trigger, it works automatically. Now, let's see over here. If I open up, I'm able to see the output, make tutorial. And that's what I typed on my, uh, that's the name of the spreadsheet, sorry. I typed hello2. Let's go and see whether it brought that information through. The value it brought is hello2. And the user, it even gives you the email address and the row. It then lets me know what row it came from. A2, um, sorry, A hello2. Now, all this information, it brought the information over from Google Sheets. Now, this is a way to bring information into your automations because this is the foundation of automations. Wherever you want to bring information from, you're able to do so. So what does this mean? It means you're able to bring in information from um, all these platforms, Google Sheets. You're able to bring information from Facebook. You're able to bring information from anywhere, WhatsApp. You're able to bring information from any platform by either an instant hook or a acid trigger. So this trigger, acid or instant, enables you to bring in information from anywhere. Now, you can imagine, if you're able to bring in information from anywhere, it means you're able to change that information, you're able to shape that information, you're able to do so many different things with that information. And what I endeavor to do is I endeavor to teach you and show you how you can build your own automations. And that's what I do on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can learn more. And in my membership from level two, I begin to teach you all about automations, show you how they're done, allow you to practice and allow you to follow through the same way that I did right now. And this is the first part of it. I'm going to do a second one that's going to be on the level two of YouTube. Where I'm going to show you how to connect this automation and build next level, how to build and connect different applications, how to build different devices, but I wanted to show you the basics, how to start. Now, you might experience challenges if your Google Sheet is not a paid version. So if you want to pay for your workspace Google Sheet, I'm going to leave the link below where you can register and pay for your Google Worksheets. And you're going to be able to basically you're subscribing to Google to be a workspace member. And as a result of that, you will be able to connect your automation and also make.com. I'll leave my link at the bottom so that you're able to subscribe to make.com so that you can continue to learn and grow with me. I I hope to teach you and educate you how you can go from beginner right through to master who's able to create many different automations. Now, for today, I want you to practice what I've taught you. I'm keeping these short so that you can go back and practice, put different triggers on and begin to practice. And as you practice, we'll continue to build onto the scenario, showing you how to do more and more and more. Thank you so much for tuning in.